Fake it Don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my bed on Wednesday, uh, what was it? Wednesday morning, I was going for my break and uh, I looked at my phone and I got a text message from you. And you're the one mm. that actually broke the news to me of, of some disturbing news coming out of Hockey Canada again that was supposed to be laid to rest but was reopened by the London Police Department. Mm hmm. And so, before I get into this, the following story deals with sexual ass assault and may have some trigger and may trigger some viewers. So, just a heads up for uh, for you guys there, as what we get into is a very sensitive subject. Uh, in regards to that, if you know somebody that is going through this in Canada, please call one eight six six nine two five. 4419, that's 1 866 925 4419. Uh, if you're in the States, I'm sure they can direct you to the appropriate affiliates if you know somebody that is going through this kind of stuff. Um, okay, let's let's uh let's dive into this. Uh this may take a bit. I'm gonna to try to get you to your Canucks game for seven o'clock, but we are probably gonna have a good thorough conversation on this for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let me get that one banner off there. Uh, okay, so in April, April of 22, a woman filed a lawsuit against Hockey, uh, Hockey Canada. Uh, the Canadian Hockey League and on eight unnamed CHL players stating she was sexually assaulted in London, Ontario hotel room on June of 2018 following a Hockey Canada event. So this is kind of a little back history of what was of what happened. Five members of Canada's 2018 World Junior team are alleged to have sexually assaulted the woman in the hotel room in Ontario. Uh, and they have been told to surrender to London police by an unconfirmed time. We don't know the time that they want to confirm. Um, I want to make it very clear that what we are talking about today, we are not holding any, we are not accusing anybody. We're just kind of pinpointing the dots of, or not pinpointing the dots, but there's a very... There's a very... Uh, there's a number of coincidences and puzzle pieces that have kind yes, of fallen into yes, place. A lot of yeah, a lot of coincidence, uh, coincidences referring to this that happened this week that make mm -hmm. you start connecting dots and potentials, right? But yeah. no one here has been accused yet. We're going to get more information as they are going to hold a press conference on Monday, May 5th. Uh, regarding February 5th. Yeah. Yes. February 5th. Sorry, Sam. Okay. Uh, and then we'll know more. Now, some of the players that are involved in this, as you can see, they're also on the mm -hmm. on the screen there. Again, um, not not confirmed a part of the situation, but again, these yes. are the ones that are coincidentally in a very interesting situation. Yes. Right now. These are ones that took a leave of absence from their clubs this week, yep. shortly after this news broke. Okay. Yep. Uh, and they are Dylan Dubé, Carter Hart, Alex Formente, Michael McLeod, and Cal Foote of the New Jersey Devils. Um, and again, you're the one that broke it to me and I did. Uh, they all requested leave of absences. Mm -hmm. uh, Dylan Dubé on the 21st, uh, request it for mental health reasons. Uh, Carter Hart was just granted a leave of absence on January 23rd. Uh, Alex Fermentation was granted a leave of absence from his Swiss Hockey League team on January 24th. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Michael McLeod and Cal McLeod were both given indefinite leave of, of absences. Okay. And this is all mm -hmm. kind of in the same time frame. So, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. D Dylan Dubé and Carter Hart were uh, granted their absences before um, this, before London police released this statement. They were granted their absences Correct. before. Michael McLeod, Cal Foote, and Alex Formanton were the same day, I believe, as a statement, or the day before. But it was like, you know, thinnest of margins of when it happened. And now, of course, nothing's confirmed, and we won't know anything officially until February 5th. But it's way too coincidental, right? It now, is. again, we don't want to make the accusation. No, and right? we're not. That's not, that's not, and we're not. And we also, urge, of it, we also urge the public out there not, exactly. not to do. We already seen enough damaging stuff that happened exactly with, with uh, the whole Connor Bedard thing a few months back. Exactly. Now, it's extremely coincidental. Five players from that team happened to take absences within a couple days of each other at the time of the statement being released. It could be a coincidence. It could be. That absolutely could be, but it just, it's too perfect of timing. The yeah. timing is too perfect. There's just some things that happen in life that you look at and you're like, Hmm, this is things have just melded together too well. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those situations. And the whole situation is just unfortunate and it's sad and it casts a bad light on hockey Canada and hockey Canada has been under fire for a few years since the story first broke. They've been under fire for a few years. They fired all their heads of the organization. They fired like their entire board of directors. Like they got rid of everyone from the organization mm -hmm. because you know, allegedly they had covered it up. They knew about it. They covered it up and got rid of it. And when that all happened, the NHL, um, the heads of the national hockey league, conducted their own investigation on it. Um, I think the NHLPA did their own investigation. London Police Department did their own investigation. And they've all come together now. And I think the conclusion on who's involved and when and whatever has finally come together. And that's why the police have said, we're giving you this chance to bring yourselves in. And oftentimes police will do that. If they know who's at fault, they'll reach out to them themselves and say, hey, you have an opportunity to bring yourself in or we will come to you. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants to have to have the police show up and take them away wherever they are. Um, so they're giving them an opportunity just to be honest and to do the right do thing the in yeah. the midst of them having done a terrible thing. So... And now probably a lot of people thought this was swept under the carpet as there was a lawsuit. Now, the alleged victim of, of this is known as EM, uh, mm -hmm. filed a lawsuit against Hockey Canada and eight unnamed players. So there was eight unnamed players yep. that the lawsuit was initially, but there's only five that have been asked to turn themselves into London police. Probably the only five uh, they could actually confirm. Yeah. Uh, and there was the lawsuit paid out 3.55 million in damages. Uh, and yeah, everyone thought it was all done and over with, but then the London police department reopened the case. I don't know exactly when they did rightfully. So, I mean, okay. What it was, you pay off, you it pay was off two years ago. Assault? Yeah. Like you can't just pay off sexual assault. It's gotta be yeah. dealt with in the proper accordance. Right. Yeah. So this incident, the incident happened. I think the incident happened in June of 2018. It was at some sort of awards gala. If the article that I read is correct, it was at some sort of gala in okay. June of 2018. It's what I read. Okay, so um, it didn't happen during the tournament. No, this is this is what I read. At okay. Some I don't remember. I don't, I don't know if it was the Globe and Mail or whatever, but the article said it was June of 2018. I believe at some sort of Met Gala. Um. The the woman went to the hospital and the police the next day to get tested and et cetera, et cetera. And to explain the situation and the police 
began investigation then and closed it quickly thereafter, citing that there wasn't enough evidence. And then a couple years, well, four years later, in 2022, she filed a lawsuit. And so London Police Department had to reopen Mm -hmm. the investigation and decided to reopen the investigation. And now we're here. Two years later, the National Hockey League has done their investigation. London Police have done their investigation. Hockey Canada, etc. have done their investigations. And like I said before, their investigations are closed. And by closed, I don't mean like, Nah, case is over. Like they've just they finished their investigation. The information is known, and now it's time to bring the 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 uh, the guilty parties forward and to begin uh, the reconciliation and rec- and rectification, rectifying yeah. whatever of the situation. So some of the circumstances, and you're correct, it was June of 2018. I just have it here pulled up. Um, Some of the circumstances is there was one of the parties was involved. There was uh, consensual, consensual sex was like was part of it, but it turned into a much more bigger item. I don't know which player they met with. And they're like, okay, well, let's, you know, and it, it led into... They started inviting people to the room. Yes, it led into And she a, wasn't okay with that. No, she wasn't. And she does not remember being videotaped. And apparently there was videos of it and stuff. So there was, again, I'm, I'm not saying that this is factual information. I am just stating that the, the, the reports I've been hearing from the Globe and Mail and that is kind of where, yep. um, where we're at with this. Uh like some of the names there, Sammy, other than the names that, that are really among the immediate, like Dylan Dubé, Carter Hart, uh, Michael McLeod, Cal Foot, but Dale McCarr was on that team. Um, Braden Point. Braden Point. Uh, who else was on that team? Tyler Radish. Yeah. That team, that 2018 was team. Was it Braden was Point at- or Colton Point? Colton Point, I got Bra- Bra- Braden Point on the Tampa Bay Lightning was on that team, I believe. Mason McTavish, uh, not Mason McTavish. Uh, Yona Gadjevich was on that team. Yeah, um, Jordan Kyle. There were, yeah, Bean. that that team was stacked. Yeah, that team was yeah. stacked, and it's unfor- it's it's unfortunate. And I don't I don't want to say like it's unfortunate to be like, oh, I'm sad that these players did. I'm I am sad these players did this, but my heart is fully with the victim of the situation. Yeah. Oh, like if sure. these if if these for players sure. did what they did. They deserve, it's, they it's, deserve, it's, yeah, it's, it's a fine line, but they deserve whatever maximum sentence they can get. Oh, and my, sure. my own, my own person, like if, just my own personal thoughts on knows, things and my own personal knows. feelings on things. Yeah. I have no tolerance for stuff like this at all. No. No. And, and it's, just as a, as another point for us here in Kelowna, um, Dylan Dubé and Cal Foot both played for the Kelowna Rockets. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's going if they confirm that they are, if those two are guilty, I don't know if that then has fall back on the Rockets as an organization. Um, and the other three players, whatever their junior clubs were, if that'll have fallout on them. But since we live in Kelowna, I'm just bringing them up specifically. Um, as well, in the arena here in Prospera Place in downtown Kelowna, they have murals of some of the best players that have ever played on that on that team. Like that mural has Leon Dreisaitl, has Duncan Keith, uh, mm-hmm. Shea Weber, um, Tyler Myers, I think, Alex. Like it has a number of players because that or this organization has pumped out ridiculous talent. Jamie Ben, um, Cal Foot's on that wall, and I think Dylan Dubé is on that wall too. Mm-hmm. Now, if these two are guilty, do they? figure out a, do they strip those murals oh they'll have to they'll i would have. i would hope so yeah they, they have to you you're trying to sell a product you're still trying to sell a product and you have a product of criminals mm-hmm. on your wall that's not and, really sell your product and realistically might be slightly biased but the rockets organization is one of the i think one of the top real pristine organizations in the in the canadian hockey league for teams that have pumped out nhl talent over the years they've been one of the most consistent it's like Kelowna, yeah. the London Knights, like Halifax Mooseheads. Yeah. Those have been some of like the most consistent teams that have pumped out talent. 
yeah. you know, Kamloops as well, just a couple hours down the road, they've pumped out crazy talent. Yeah. And so I just wonder if it, the situation will have fallback on these June, the junior organizations that these, these players played for. I don't, I can't remember what teams, you know, McLeod played for or Carter Hart. Well, Carter Hart, Carter Hart played for the Everett silver tips, I think in the Western hockey league as well. But McLeod, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know about, about him, but, and Alex Formanton, I can't remember who he played for either, but this is going to have a fallback on Everett and on Kelowna for their players and the other two organizations. Be, if I recall, but I could be wrong Yeah. That. But for, at least for the Rockets and for the silver tips, yeah. is there going to be something fall back on them? And do those organizations then get investigated as well for, Hey, did you know about this too? Yeah. Like, is, you no. know, do you know about this at the time? That's just, that's just my thinking. Is that going to be a thing that happens? It could well, be. Who knows? Or like we can also look at the NHL, how they handled it as they announced on that specific day that this announcement came out. And this is another thing that the NHL is taking heat from a little bit too, is they they kind of went away from that, announcing that they want to maybe bring a team into Utah here. Into Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City. City. Yeah. And that was right on the day that this stuff broke. And it's... it. You know, I've I've watched a few YouTubers out there saying how this is a bad look for the NHL because they, you know, right away just hey, let's talk about expansion. Let's not talk about this. This is we don't want to talk about that because you know, you know it's not a good idea, right? And this is something that's been plaguing the NHL with Kyle Beach a few years ago and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Corey Perry earlier this year, which we don't know exactly what happened there, but obviously he was uh like everything's okay because he's now an Edmonton Oiler and Gary Bettman gave him the green light to say, Hey, sign wherever you want. And it could be just a fact that Kyle Davidson, the Blackhawks, uh, uh, not GM, the Blackhawks, uh, owner or, or CEO, I guess, I guess that's what he'd be. Uh, basically didn't want to dabble with anything because their tolerance level is, so we'll see. Anyway, yeah, we're going to get more information and we'll probably end up doing a, a follow up on this in a few weeks once we get once we find out on February 5th and what is what. After February 5th, we'll we'll definitely have to talk about this and that'll be post All-Star game as well. Yeah, and then we could talk about the All-Star game which, you know, is yeah, whatever. <laughs> not well, we'll see. I think the All-Star game is going to be good this week. But anyway, let's let's try to go to a bit of a lighter subject here, Sammy. Hey guys, it's Gene here. If you like the content you just witnessed on this channel, be sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. I may be an old timer, but I've been through the trenches of the Empton Oilers since their inception back in 1979. I witnessed the glory years, went through the decade of darkness, and now the McDavid era. And if you're just an NHL fan, join Sammy and myself every second week on NHL Aftermath. Chime in, we'll answer your questions.